What is up guys? Chick Cacus is back at it again. Thank you so much for stopping by. And today, we are going to be going over some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news, courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just gone live unveiling official information. And so, let's get started. First things first, Bungie talks about introducing a brand new mechanism to Season 13, which is Seasonal Challenges. Essentially, this is, according to Bungie, done to kind of alleviate the bounty fatigue feeling where you're just going and constantly grinding bounties over and over again, and a lot of that is going to be replaced like bounties themselves are not completely going away, but again, a lot of that uh, is going to be replaced with this seasonal challenges system. So here's what it looks like and what is going to happen is as follows. Essentially, every single week, a few seasonal challenges will become unveiled. They'll become available to do. Then those seasonal challenges upon completion will award, and you can see some of the rewards on screen, bright dust as well as experience. So if you are grinding through the season's pass and leveling up your artifact, gaining more power levels, stuff like that, these seasonal challenges are extremely important to do but also very importantly once they appear for a week they don't disappear it's not like bounties where if you didn't pick them up one week you're kind of screwed so you can hop on on week five of the next season and have all of the previous week's challenges available for you to do so you can catch up so, Bungie says some of the challenges deal with seasonal content and others push players to complete Strikes, Gambit, and the Crucible or to focus on non-activity focused destiny rituals like gaining power, unlocking seasonal artifact mods, or improving guns and armor. Importantly, they say that these challenges can only be completed once per account. They also mentioned that apart from Bright Dust and Experience, they can also reward the new seasonal currency that we don't really know about yet and other interesting items. They also mentioned that because these take all season to complete essentially and they're available to do whenever once they become unlocked, they've had a bit more leeway with creating some interesting or more difficult challenges. So some of those things include uh, defeating primeval envoys in Gambit, and obviously you're gonna have to complete like a decent amount, uh, defeating enemies in the Nightfall of the Ordeal with seasonal weapons, gaining infamy or valor ranks, acquiring the ritual weapon and its cosmetic ornaments, winning rounds in Trials of Osiris, and completing a Grandmaster Nightfall. But due to these changes, Bungie says that they are removing weekly bounties from Zavala, Shax, and the Drifter, Banshee44, and the Seasonal Vendor. They'll still have daily bounties and repeatable bounties, but not weekly ones. But very importantly, these challenges will disappear at the end of the season, so make sure to complete them before that happens. Moving on from there, Bungie talks Bright Dust. And essentially, here's the breakdown. Simplistically, they're simply adding more ways to get Bright Dust, especially with these new challenges. So for all players, you can earn like a total of 10,000 Bright Dust. And then for the season's pass, that's even more so. And then of course, there's, you know, weekly stuff as well. Okay, but moving on from there, we have some very impactful information, some big sandbox changes coming next season. So, Bungie says, in preparation for crossplay coming later this year, they're making some changes to the recoil stat. So, right now, if you're on MNK, you have basically no recoil with a lot of the guns compared to console. Like, it's night and day difference. And so, to address that, Bungie is actually going to increase the recoil stat on M and K to bring it more in line with the console version. So they do say that the following weapon archetypes will have their mouse and keyboard recoil adjusted closer to controller. So essentially they reduce the difference from about 40% to about 20% in terms of how close it is to the controller version. So that includes auto rifles, scout rifles, pulse rifles, submachine guns, hand cannons and machine guns. So all of those things, starting with season 13, you're gonna have a lot more recoil on M and K. So 
Of course, that's gonna massively change the meta, right? That is really going to spice things up. And some people would say in a good way and others would say in a bad way. Certainly, it's probably gonna tempt a lot more people to plug in that controller because you don't have that significant of a recoil advantage anymore but on controller, you still got that aim assistance, baby. So I can really see a lot of people potentially moving to controller because of these changes. However, Bungie does say that they're making some global changes to recoil as well. So they say submachine guns are largely outclassed by auto rifles at medium range and sidearms in short range with player feedback often mentioning how hard they are to control. To address this feedback, what they've done is they've reduced the camera movement from firing submachine guns by 24%. In addition, pulse rifles with M and K changes were kicking a little bit too high. So they reduced the camera movement from firing pulses by 7% and machine guns same thing that's been reduced by 9.5 percent so they're, they're getting worse still from where they are right now but like they're getting a little bit of a buff as well so they're not as bad as it would seem in terms of these increases to recoil but moving on from there, let's talk about some buffs. So firstly, rocket launchers. They are one of the least used weapon types in PvE. So they're going to increase rocket launcher damage by 30% starting next season. And they say exotic rocket launchers have been adjusted individually and are affected by this change to different degrees. And they say paired with the buffs to reserves from last season, they're hoping to see an increase in usage. And, and certainly a 30% damage increase is very significant. And yeah, get those rocket launcher god rolls before next season because they could really spike in usage. Moving on from there, fusion rifles. They say the usage is very low and they feel like an unreliable choice in the crucible compared to shotguns. So they increased fusion rifle damage fall off start distance based on range stat. So it's 6% with zero range and 16% with 100 range. And they reduced the camera movement from firing a fusion rifle by 9.5%. So fusion rifles, straight buff. Then Interestingly, for breach grenade launchers, they say the usage is super low, it's outside from mountaintop, and obviously the reason is that you gotta hold the trigger and then release it to explode. So they say that now, breach grenade launcher projectiles will now detonate on impact with a character even if holding the trigger. Now I had to read this a couple times and I guarantee people are going to get this wrong and think it's just direct impact all the time like the mountaintop, but no, they're specifically saying on impact with an enemy character. So right now, if you hold down a breech loaded grenade launcher, uh, like the truth teller, when you shoot it and you hit a knight, for example, it will actually bounce off that knight because you're still holding the trigger. Now it won't do that. It'll automatically detonate even if you're still holding the trigger. At least that is what the wording would indicate for that buff. So that's certainly uh, more easy to use. I wish they just change it to actually direct impact. That would make them way easier to use. But I digress. Moving on, nerfs. So Bungie says, while sniper rifle usage has dropped in the Crucible, we've observed that it's hard uh, to challenge someone with a sniper rifle, even if you get the first shot on an enemy and they can often respond and win the fight. So they increase the aim down sights flinch to snipers when taking damage from other players. So there you go, that's gonna be interesting. Also, swords. Right now, everyone and their grandmas are using swords in PvE. They're cracked out of their minds. So it does make sense they're getting a bit of a nerf, so they're reducing the sword damage by 15%. I'm sure Lament and Fallen Guillotine will still be insane, but you know, it is sad to see a lot of people's favorite weapons get nerfed. Moving on from there, some exotic changes and bug fixes. So they say some exotic weapons lose their buffs when you switch weapons, which is intended. They would also lose their buffs when you pull out your Go Shell, which is not intended. So they fix that on the Ace of Spades, Teraba, and Hawkmoon. So those should be a little bit easier to use and not as annoying. <laughs> like you summon your Go Shell and then you lose your buff. I wish, I read this wrong the first time, I thought they were making them carry over their buffs and I was like oh my gosh the Terrible is gonna be so good 
but nope. Moving on from there, Borealis and Hard Light now have a custom, quite short animation for switching the damage type. That can be good instead of having to do the reload in an animation. Then the duality, they increase the damage fall off distance by 1.25 meters uh, while both firing from the hip and aiming down sights, but they reduce the maximum buff stacks from seven to five, and each stack now grants more of a damage bonus and they extended the buff duration slightly so duality just got a buff then the Sturm will once again reload any equipped special slot weapon on kill provided the special weapons clip isn't already full and there's reserve ammo so that's a buff to the Sturm which is already cracked. Then they fix an issue uh, that was preventing the Merciless from increasing its charge rate on non-lethal kills so Merciless finally hopefully it will be usable. And one more thing, they are going to take a pass on the Arbalest, which is just tearing up the Crucible on console specifically, but it won't be ready for the February 9th launch of Season 13, but it will be touched later in Season 13. Honestly, I'm just super disappointed that linear fusion rifles that are used less than rocket launchers, I literally just looked it up, the most used linear fusion rifle sees less play than the most used rocket launcher right now. So rocket launchers got 30% damage buff, Where's my love to linear fusion rifles? Bungie, did you forget this gun type exists? Like this is starting to, to be weird. All right, moving on from there. The last thing we're gonna talk about is that Crimson Days, Bungie says, is not arriving in February. That is the yearly Valentine's Day event where there's a doubles playlist and they just thought that, hey, we often miss the mark with this event. So we're gonna spend our resources elsewhere. That does make sense. A little sad to see though. And they also said that the doubles playlist is being vaulted for some reason. I don't know why they can't have doubles as a rotating playlist. I think a lot of people like doubles, but that is it for the latest D2 news. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, found it informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.